currently at Crystal Palace. Remy Matthews, thanks for coming in, mate. Done a six-week trial, signed me at 10, and I was there till 24. And he basically turned around to me and he said, since meeting you, I've realised that football isn't all as it seems. Yeah. Best goalkeeper you've ever worked with. I have to think about this. I? That's when Bolton then obviously come in. I've been told by Richard Lee, obviously a big agent, yeah. a great guy as well that there's a chance of me going here. I'm now speaking to my actual agent and he's saying no. This will wine sells you up because uh, we're going to play a goalie or no goalie now. <laughs> here he goes. I need to go back to my sort of parent club and get told, look, get yourself over there in a change room on your own. Come in when the 21s are training. It was it was tough and it got to that stage where they were like, I'm not getting paid, I'm not playing. Let's mate. talk about how your Crystal Palace move materialised there. To this day, it was the best decision I've ever made. I've seen stars come round and I've seen Wilf sprinting off and probably the biggest celebration I've ever seen him do. You got knocked out by Wilf Zaha, Literally, mate. yeah, it's not a bad one, is it? I wake up every day and realise how lucky I am to be doing what I'm doing. What a save from Mark Howard. Huge shout out to Forged Irish Stout for being part of this podcast. Listen to that beauty. An unbelievably smooth, creamy stout by Conor McGregor, the UFC legend. Not here to take part, but here to take over. Forged Irish Stout is on a mission to become the biggest Irish stout. Conor McGregor has taken over the whiskey game. Now he's about to take over the stout game. Me and my guests will be enjoying a few cans in the next few episodes. If you fancy checking it out too, make sure you hit the description below and find out where you can get Forged Irish Stout. Forged Irish Stout will be available in Asda nationwide come August. Let's get back to the podcast. Hello and welcome back to the Yours Mine Away podcast with me, Mark Howard. Uh, I've joined by producer Ben today as well. Uh, shout out, Ben. All right, mate. Uh, I'm really excited about today's guest. Uh, I think me and you have probably had most conversations, not with each other, but about each other for the last few years. Sure, yeah. uh, uh, another very good goalkeeper currently at Crystal Palace, Remy Matthews. Thanks for coming in, mate. That's a pleasure. Thanks for asking me on. Yeah, no problem, mate. Uh, like I said, I think that the, the community that we both work in, we've spoke about each other for years. And actually, this is, well, you've just reminded me this is actually the, the second time we've met. Literally, yeah. I think I've spoke about you more than I spoke about myself to, yeah. to a few people. Obviously, being at Bolton and, and with Selzy. Um, and Weeks. And Big Weeks. <laughs> and even Lonners as well. Like, there's so many people that know both of us or are connected in some way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's one of them where like I get caught up talking too much about someone else that I forget to talk about myself half the time. True, yeah. Just forget to give yourself a pat on the back every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm going to crack straight on with our quick fire uh, questions, right? Just to break the ice a little bit, mate. Settle you in, right? Uh, favorite goalkeeper kit color? Mm, I'm gonna go white. White. Yeah, I wore white last year. One, well, I wore white last year for one game against Celtic. We we got bat battered like, but I just felt oh. I felt nice in it. Yeah, but yeah, never wore it after that. So strange one. Yeah. That's nice that though, right? So play out from the back or kick it long. Are you playing the depends, SDR, yeah, FL depends. Yeah, depends. Depends who I'm playing for. Yeah. Like last year, obviously with Fiera, it was always play out, play out, play out. Last, uh, and then when I went to St Johnston, it was more play out when you can, but let's just kick it long, kick and, it long. and try and get the second balls, to be honest. Uh, who's your favourite ever goalkeeper? I'm going to go Carlo Cudicini. Yeah. When I grew up, I was a big Chelsea fan. Nice. Um, so he that's was the first one that's mentioned Carlo. Cudicini, what a yeah, goalkeeper. No, what a keeper by the way. he was. Yeah, he was, he was definitely my favourite. And then obviously Peter Cech moving yeah. forward. Um, but would have definitely been. I just remember he used to save every single penalty like every time when, when I was younger. Didn't he have Lotto gloves as well? Lotto, that's right. Yeah, yeah, Lotto. Yeah. He was about four foot tall as yeah, well at the time. Mate, what a goalie. Yeah, he that top hand save, he was the first one. That's to what he was big. so good at. I can't do it still, but that was what he was a joke at. <laughs> I can't reach that <laughs> either, mate. Right, uh, match of the day or Sky Sports News? Match of the day. Yeah? Yeah. Just grew up as a child. It's too much rubbish yeah, on Sky yeah. Sports. Long sleeve shirts or short sleeve? I actually wore short sleeve last year. It just depends what... I guess they've got. I wear short sleeve, but with an Under Armour, unless it's like some goalie kits are baggy in it. Baggy. That's what I'm saying. Like <laughs> when I was younger, and like you go to these loan clubs and you get these kits, and you're too scared to ask for the size, and they're baggy. You got them tucked in. Some of the pictures I saw, like when I was 18, 19, 
miles off it. Mate, you're lucky you ain't as old as me. I used to have elbow pads built into yeah, the shirt. Yeah, I had one of them. I think, where was I? They were awful. Might have been Burton. No, Burton was short sleeve, but there was definitely one club, purple it was as well, and a big baggy, but they just make them so much baggier as yeah. well. Mate, even the short, mate, I remember old school shorts, the you shorts used to have padded pads already as well. in yeah. the shorts. Imagine actually doing that now, you'd look awful. <laughs> right, World Cup or Champions League? Champions League. Yeah? Yeah, not, I don't know, like, I'm not, I don't watch too much into the international, unless they get obviously quarters, semis and, and, and like that, but I'm not too, too big into... I, in the summer, I try and have, I try and sort of zone off from it all. And yeah, I'm the, I, mean, I think international is boring at yeah, times. I'm, like I'm the, the Ashes, mate. I watch the Ashes, yeah. but I won't watch any other cricket. Any other cricket, rugby, same yeah. as well. Like all these. Just norm, jump on yeah. the bandwagon, yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> and it's getting good. Right, uh, best goalkeeper in the world right now. Um, that's a good question. That I'm gonna go. I really like Allison. To be fair, yeah, I like Allison. Yeah, I like Edison. Um, how they can both be at Bra for Brazil, mate. Unbelievable. One of them don't play. That's, That's what I'm saying. Horrendous. That must be some t tension in training now, isn't there, between them two? Oh. Right, head tennis or goalie wars? Head tennis. Yeah? Yeah, head tennis all I day. I goalie wars, mate. We don't, no one talks about uh, goalie wars enough. That sort of died out a little bit for me, though. We don't play that too much. We Dino loves head tennis, so we play that quite a bit. Yeah. And spike ball, you ever play spike ball? ball's good, isn't it? Well, Dino obviously brought that in. Like, and since... I remember the clip. We have to... That's right, Norwich. Yeah, Norwich. Dino. I went. I was on loan at the time when they were. Who was it? Ben Killip, weren't it? Um, Michael McGovern. Might have been Gov and Paul. Paul Jones. Paul Jones. Paul Jones. Yeah. No, it was Paul Jones, Ben Killip, John Ruddy, and Dino. That's right, mate. What a game! What a what a game that is. So you still doing it now? We yeah. play it. Yeah, we we haven't played it this season. Obviously, being pre-season, but Dino loves it because he sort of he invented that game. Like he he'll tell, like, he did though. He brought it into <laughs> Norwich, and ever since you see like a few. Few other people jump on it as well, but that's probably one of the better games. Yeah, that, that like, kind of went viral. That for clip with, people, that was them it? for mate. That was unbelievable as well. Yeah. To be fair, you never get, you never see that it was again. A great right? standard. Yeah, it was. Right, and then one more uh, best goalkeeper you've ever worked with. Oh, I'm gonna have to think about this, and I make, yeah, make sure I answer this, this properly. Is a stitch up. I know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've I've actually been fortunate to work with quite a few. Obviously, recently worked with Sam, Jack, Guaita. Um, Big John Ruddy growing up, he was massive for me, big influence and more of a role model because he was sort of like the main number one at Norwich at the time and he was there for a long time and done really well, got yeah. an England call up. Um, so yeah, I'll probably say John. John's had a great career. Sam, obviously, <coughs> excuse me, Sam's doing really well at the minute. So there's, there's been a few. I'm trying to think if I forgot anyone, but... <laughs> I'm going to say big John Ruddy, yeah. Yeah, nice. Right. Uh, so normally we kick this off with the usual questioning, right? But why goalkeeping? Why Why are you a goalkeeper? <coughs> um, I actually tried to play, like start playing up from, I think I was centre back or whatever. I was always quite a tall, tall young kid. Um, and I think I might have been eight or nine and I played, I played for a team, but I played a year up and I was at centre half and the keeper got injured and it was sort of like, go on, you're the tallest, didn't you get? And literally from that day on, I remember that game literally like it was yesterday and I had the, probably the best game I've ever had since today. <laughs> still to, the, still to, 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 to this day, the best game I've ever had. And then that season got player of the year, manager's player of the year, all that. And just from then, yeah, literally kicked on. And, and fortunate enough, I think I was 9, 10, joined obviously Norwich Academy. So yeah. It's strange once you get that bug for it. It's weird, yeah, because everyone's like, why keeper? Why did you pick that? But look, obviously I'd love to be a striker and getting all that as much money as possible. But... <laughs> um, no, nah, like I, I, I love doing it. Like I love, I love every day and love, love the job that I've got. And obviously, you've got to be a little bit mad. But um, everyone's journey into goalkeeping is normally like they volunteered. They like volunteered. No one else would kid. do it. Yeah. And then it's like you realise, oh, it's no glory, but it's all guts. And then you're like, <laughs> yeah, I quite like that bit. Yeah, that, that's what happened though. It was like, oh, go on, then you get. And everyone's sort of like, right, we'll have, we'll rotate ten minutes, ten minutes here, ten minutes there, and then all of like, like I said, I went in. And did not want to go out. And then my dad got a sort of a bug for it and, and, and sort of like said, look, that's that's now your position and just concentrate on that. So, and I ain't looked back ever since. Decent that. And it was a pretty quick pathway then straight into Norwich's academy. Yeah, I, I actually started quite late. So I was, I think, like eight, nine. And obviously for a kid, that was quite late. Um, and then off the back of that season, I went on like a community course or whatever it was. Football um, in the community. Football in the community, Class, that's it. Mate, what a, what FITC or something, that's what they call. Ledge. Um, and I actually done quite well. And I remember the main guy who who took it come over to me and said, "Look, 
really like him. But at the time, we've got Jed Steer. He was the keeper there, but he was a year older than me. But they thought I was playing, because I was playing up a year, they thought that was my age. So obviously my old man said, he's playing up a year, blah, blah. Straight away, right, we want to take him on a six-week six, six week trial. Because it was always six-week trial. always was a six-week trial. Um, so yeah, went done a six-week trial, signed me at 10. And I was there till 24. So I was there for 14 years. It was a long... Just went so quick. Looking back now, it's it flew by, but it was a good stint, and it was a great club to be fair. And I was you were, again, obviously being born there as well. Yeah, it was perfect. Are you, are you a Norwich fan? My old man was a Chelsea fan, so oh, you said yeah, can't yeah, yeah. But it was um, once I signed there, you probably know yourself who the, you play for. You sort of support. Do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? So I, I supported them. I still got again now. Still keep track of how they get on. I, I still know a few of the lads there, and and a few um, few people that work there. So. Um, I'd probably say Chelsea fan, but more interest in Norwich than what I am Chelsea now. And then yeah. obviously now I've got more interest in Palace because that's course, who I yeah. play for. You have to say that, mate. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I've always been like it. Every yeah. club I've gone to, people go, who do you support? And it's just, as a footballer, it's... I think we're all the same. You end up following football. Exactly, yeah. You, you can't support a team. You that's can't what have I'm saying. passion for I can't play team. for Norwich and support Ipswich. No, no it just doesn't work like that. No. So. Uh, obviously, then, like you say, and you come through the academy there. You, you've made, you've brushed over the fact that you made that sound really easy, mate. Nah, I bet it was far from the it. amount of keepers that I had to try and compete with. Yeah. Obviously, Gunny was there at the time. Angus Gunn, Jed Steer, Declan Rudd, Joe Lewis. Um, it's a conveyor. It was a goal. You that? know what? Looking back, it was, it was, it was a tough sort of um, path to follow because all them keepers I named were England internationals at yeah. the time, and I was sort of. The only one out of that bunch that never played for for England as a as a schoolboy, um, but the good thing with it is that always drove me on. I was always looking up to Jared Deck. Um, it was more them two, and obviously Big John Ruddy at the time, and that was more of like what what sort of got me that um, I guess got me to that next level of competing with the best because they were the best in the in the in the country at the time. So that was that was probably a big factor. And I was always fortunate that I had good goalkeeping coaches growing up as well. So that helped massively too. Yeah, obviously when you're that age, you're trying to pick off the one ahead of you all the time, aren't you? But well, you've got a hell of a standard had, to pick off there. I, I had one at my age, um, which luckily I ended up ended up getting ahead. I, then I had Angus coming up. So I had him behind me trying to trying to get to me. I had, I was then trying to get to Jed, Jed to deck. Um, and it just has that sort of spiral effect. But I think Jed... I think Jed then left. He then moved on to Villa, so it sort of opened up a path for me to sort of become the professional. Yeah. And Deck was still there at the time. Deck obviously then moved on to I think it was Preston, and then it was sort of me, Mark Bunn, and John. Um, Big Bunny, the longest Bunny, arms in the world. What a guy, mate! Bunny, what a guy! Unbelievable keeper, though. shot stopper, and mate, unbelievable. He came through at Northampton Academy. My brother. That's was right. There. Yeah. Right, and they were both in the, like I think they shared digs together. Right? Yeah. And they've got some terrible stories together. But like, <laughs> yeah. Bunny used to come for every cross, mate. He had the longest, the arms longest in the arms, world. mate. He's, well, obviously, he, he can scratch his ankles without, but like, without <laughs> bending down. Mate. What a guy he was! But some of the saves that he would make, we obviously had Dave Watson, a goalkeeping oh, coach, yeah. and what a goalkeeping coach he was as well. But we had we had him, and this like he would probably be he'd do this drill where you'd be on an angle, and he'd volley it from. Five yards. So you start in the middle of the goal, and you'd have to run across and just go for go it. for it. He would never ever concede. There's me going in conceding everyone, and then he's going in literally couldn't couldn't score past him. Like he's, some of the the levers he had were yeah. were unbelievable, and the, some of the saves that I saw him make in training were were ridiculous. Even when he played, he played he played really well. Yeah, but he was always he always liked that comfortable number two spot. Bunny was a good guy. He loved he loved that sort of yeah, a great guy. Chilling, Bunny, yeah. Man. So, uh, so when you come through the academy and that was your obviously that you're saying about that goalie group. Did you just go straight into that goalie group and they progressed you because they knew that they had this conveyor belt and was it like you all got a bit fast tracked to the first team? Yeah, potentially. I was probably more. So I had um, a, an academy goalkeeping coach, Darren Lovell. Who I'm not sure mm, if you know him yeah. from. He, he's he's been at Cardiff and stuff like that. I had him. Um, so I was always in and around sort of the academy, and then Dave Watson come in, and to be fair used to take me up. Um, like I'd, I'd go from the academy to a first team every now and then, and, and then he sort of tried to progress me even more. And then it was it was really when Dean Kiley come in, and that's when I actually sort of went with him full-time. D- Dino sort of took me under his wing, um, must have saw something in me. And Still um, does. Well, yeah, exactly. To this <laughs> day, he's not, never let me go, has he? So what a guy. Um, so, yeah, he... 
he obviously brought me in and that's when I was training full time pushed me out pushed me to go on loan I think I'd die uh, what did, what did I, where did I go maybe I've got them written down here mate I can list them oh, I've got so many on there <laughs> no. I think that was previous I think it was was it Hamilton after that Doncaster Doncaster right Hamilton. okay yeah so I went to Doncaster for two three months back end of the season I think it might have been him then and then obviously uh, Hamilton was a big one because Alex Neal was there at the yeah. time they had the connection and it was sort of, of like course, yeah. I, I remember to this day I went in to, for a meeting with Alex Neal and it was um I had a couple of clubs in, in England that wanted to take me on loan and I'm sitting there having a conversation. He said, oh, so what do you want to do? And I was like, well, ideally I'd like to stay in England. He said, nah. He said, you're going to Scotland. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, so, so he asked me the question knowing exactly knowing what I was doing. So I didn't really have a say, but you know what? It was it was a blessing really because I actually really enjoyed my time up in um, in Scotland when I was at Hamilton and obviously Dino come and watched me a few times and, and it was... Um, it was a good experience. It was proper football. It was, it I've was, said this before, but I went out on loan to mm, Scotland when I was right, young yeah. and I loved it. I think yeah. it's probably the best place for any under 23 goalie to learn to a trade. Learn. Massive. And even growing up around yeah. Glasgow, Edinburgh, places like that was was, was unbelievable. Um, what for the nightlife? Nightlife was a joke. <laughs> nightlife was class. Even <laughs> Hamilton nightlife was all right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it was, that was obviously my, that was probably my first sort of major loan where I played I played a stint of games um, and then I got injured at Christmas time I think I dislocated my shoulder I had to go back to Norwich for a couple of months and then um, was, like, was you always a bit nervous when you got into the first team like that environment at Norwich um, like, what, what did you notice a massive step up or was it <laughs> oh, you, you looked up to the other goalies and you, yeah, that goalie group was such a strong unit anyway that yeah. you just felt comfortable They, you know what Deck Jed and, and John and even Bunny some good guys, um, some good there. keepers. Yeah, they were they were good good lads as well, and they looked after me. And that, that's that's massive, and that's what I try and do now. I've experienced that as any of the young lads. Like you know yourself, when you were a kid, it's intimidating. Yeah, um, we had like Grant Hall, Morrison, people like that, and it's like, don't talk to me unless I talk to you. Do you yeah. know what I mean? But I, I got I used to get on with more Russell Martin, and and I think if you try and come across as a good guy and respectful guy, they'll respect you as well. I think. Nowadays, you see a lot of young kids earn a lot of money very early, and they're not quite very humble, disrespectful, not as humble, and and it it does play a factor. Yeah. And and your senior lads do see that. Even us to this day, you sort of see it probably at Wrexham and hundred percent, yeah. and not so much at Palace, but I see it obviously last year at St Johnson and stuff like that. There's kids, all right, they they probably didn't earn too much money, but they see all these higher up players and think that that's how they should be. Bosch bags, watches, this, that. Do you know what I mean? Driving these cars and yeah, just like that. <laughs> 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 yeah. um, no, one hundred percent. I think that the the footballer lifestyle is not all it's cracked up to be. It's and not, I think people yeah. look at like the Premier League players, yeah. and it just get carried it, away with it. It's like me when I when obviously I went from um, Sunderland to to Palace. Obviously, Sunderland massive club, facilities r- ridiculous, but the difference in obviously League One to the Prem. Is, is crazy from we went to Australia last year for pre-season and you're flying business class you're, the hotels are five star and everything's just top top whereas I went to obviously St Johnson last year again a great club but the difference in facilities gym wise food everything is just it's crazy really when you think about it but it's funny because I stayed in um, I stayed in like an apartment and above me my landlord lived and he basically turned around to me and he said since meeting you I've realised that Football isn't all as it seems yeah. because there's times where I'll go home. Obviously, family stayed stayed at home, didn't didn't move up with me, so I'm going home at say four or five o'clock, and you just you do nothing. Especially no. if you just lost, say you played Rangers, Celtic, you've just been battered four or five nil. It's a lonely place. It's a lonely well. place, and you you can't go out because you can't get seen out. Where I lived, everyone knew who you was because it was such a little city, little little yeah. town. So if you get seen or anything, it's like. Straight away, they don't know your circumstance. You're getting battered. Oh, you shouldn't be out. You're this, you're that, yeah. and and that's that's the big thing. And unless you're top top, people don't see. There's there's so much different things in 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 football. Hundred percent, mate. Right, I'm gonna. This will wine sells you up because uh, we're gonna play goalie or no goalie now. <laughs> oh, here he goes. What a save from Mark Howard. Hopefully I can do better than him. Oh, wow. I better answer a few questions, actually. <laughs> <laughs> right, so Selzy so got 7 out of 10, mate, so I know you're going to want to beat him. I'll try and beat uh, him. Right, so I think you've heard it before. You know the script. It's yeah. one point for each correct answer, and I've got five international goalkeepers, and I've got five random people. Has anyone ever got zero? No. 
You'll be all right, mate. First for everything. Right. You ready, yeah? <laughs> Go on. Don't be nervous. Number one, Sam Nelson. Sam Nelson. International? All international keepers? They're all international say? goalkeepers or five random people. He's got to be some sort of... He's got to be English or something, so I'm going to have to say no. No keeper. No goalie? No goalie. He is not a goalkeeper. It's Idris Elba's character from Hijack. <laughs> okay. No, I never Have you not seen the TV show no. Hijack yet? No. Oh, it's three, I, I'm three or four episodes series. in. What a programme. Is it decent? Yeah, it's a series, yeah. yeah. Just, oh, just He's a negotiator on a plane, mate, that gets taken What's that hostage. On? It's on... Like, oh, God. I'm going to have to think about it. Yeah, think about that. Apple TV, I think. Oh, okay. Might be. It's good, might mate. To, might have to really good. Into that. It's only, there's only been so a few much spare time. Out. Yeah, true, yeah. Right, number two. Hernando Ari. Ari. Never heard of it. I've never heard of him if it is. <laughs> Lovely pasta dish. Say that again? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> is that you trying to do me there? <laughs> Hernando Ari. Hernando Ari. I'm going to say goalkeeper. It is a goalkeeper, yeah. right? Uh, Indonesia and Percy Bayer goalkeeper. Okay. Nice. Indonesian, Indonesian goalkeeper. Right. Two out of two, mate. Flying. Good start. Better than sells you already. <laughs> right. Number three, Matiev Vidovsky. Sounds like a, f- a football name. Sounds sort of Swedish or something. Like that. Say it again. I'm trying to see the My way he says it. Like he says it right or not. Matievs Vidovsky. I'm gonna go goalkeeper. Yeah, he is Slovenia Slide, goalkeeper yeah. and Olympia. Olympia. Oh, I'm not even gonna pronounce the second bit of the team's name. Christ. <laughs> Jubilanja? Never heard I've, of it. I've got no idea, mate. That's all I've butchered that. I bet Selzy knows all these games. Yeah, he would though. do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, he's definitely provided glass for everyone. Right, number four, <laughs> Sean Carter. Again, that's an English name, so I've never heard of it. I'm going to go no goalkeeper. Uh, Jay Z is not uh, <laughs> a goalie, mate. Wouldn't, couldn't even tell you. That. Nah, nice. Oh, mate, four out of four, you're flying here. Right, number five, let me get the pronunciation, right? Aaron, <laughs> that's the odd bit. Sturtevants. Aaron Sturtevants. Aaron Sturtevants. Mm, again, never heard of any of these goalkeepers you've, you've reeled off, but I'm going to go no goalkeeper. You're on fire, mate. It's breaking bad start. Aaron Paul's real okay. name. Yeah, good. Aaron Sturtevants. What a g- never heard of it. Sand never heard of him either. I've watched Broken Bad as well. That's, yeah. that's bad, bad of me, that. He's definitely got the most put-on voice I've ever heard of. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, flying. Five out of five. Right, number six, Ika Alvarez. Mm, I like the name, so I'm going to go goalkeeper. <laughs> six out of six, mate. Oh. Andorra and Villarreal goalkeeper. Oh, is that Villarreal? Oh, okay. Yeah. It's a proper football name, that, and it? Ika Alvarez. Yeah, it sounded right. Yeah, nice. Right, number seven, Christopher Cooksey. Cooksey, Christopher Cooksey. No goalkeeper. He is not a goalkeeper. <laughs> Mate, you've already got sells his total. Should we just finish it there? <laughs> <laughs> he is a uh, rapper, Frank Ocean, American singer, songwriter. I've never heard of him. No, I'm not going to try and sing one of his songs. <laughs> I'll leave that right there. Right, number eight, Sergei Ignatovich. I think my pronunciation was good then, you know. That's, yeah, well that's, that one, that's what's yeah. making me think, but again, I don't know. Sarkic. You can't keep going goalkeeper, no goalkeeper. Can you say it again? What's his name? <laughs> Sergei Ignatovic. I'm going to go no goalkeeper. He is a goalkeeper for Belarus. Should have gone with it, shouldn't I? Should have yeah, I'm an R in there, dude. Know, yeah. Second guessing yourself. I don't, I was, yeah. don't guess the that's formula, the mate. Right, number nine, Wade Wilson. Mm, no goalkeeper. He is not a goalkeeper. That's actually my boss's character uh, in Deadpool. That's <laughs> <laughs> Deadpool's Wade name. Wilson. Yeah. I thought that couldn't have been a name. Right? No, mate, eight out of ten so far. Right, one more to go. Number ten, Jeffrin Barr. It's mad that I don't know any of these goalkeepers. Yeah. Isn't it? <laughs> Uh, no, I know them all as well. Jeff from- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no <laughs> chance. Such a lie. Such a lie. What's his name again? Jeffrey Barr. Jeffrey Barr. Jeffrey Barr. No goalkeeper. He is a goalkeeper. He's South Africa and Porter Down goalkeeper, mate. Eight out of ten. You've I'll got- take that. Yeah, I'm happy with that. More than sells it, so he's going to be that- feeling. <laughs> I'm surprised he's not ringing me now. <laughs> You're definitely taking a picture of that. Send on your way out of here. 
<laughs> Class, mate. Well done, mate. Eight out of ten. Buzzing nice. off that. Right, uh, I want to talk about your loan system uh, and how it's treated you. Beer all night. Yeah. yeah. So, like, obviously, you've had a few very successful loans. Mm-hmm. You've, you've gone to teams and just covered, basically. Yeah. How do your loans, how have they came about? Is it more the club sorted them out? Is it an agent sorted them out? Or is it, like, you knocking on the door going, I tell you what, I, I need a game here? Um, I think it's all, it's a bit of both, really. Obviously, being being at a young age, it was more your manager, your goalkeeping coach, because you I had no contact through through them years. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You don't really know anyone. Um, so obviously went to Hamilton, done pretty well there. And off the back of that, I think Derek Adams was at Plymouth at the time and he was actually watching. We played a playoff game, last game of the season for Hamilton against Dundee United to stay in the league. And I played quite well. And I think he, I remember him saying that he remembers me from that. So that's how that one come, come along. They contacted Norwich. Um, and that was an emergency loan at the time because the keeper there actually got injured so I went there Christmas time um, <coughs> and mate they were rock bottom 10 points adrift it was unbelievable 10 points adrift rock bottom basically sort of going and just nothing to lose I think we went like 15 games unbeaten flying and then we ended up finishing one point from from the playoffs and it was funny because we played Gilling away and I, I just can't play every time I play there I get battered I just I think it's always far, it's, I think every time I've been there we've lost at least 5-0 so we went there and um, we needed to win. I think we needed to win six. And then we need to score at least six goals to to make the playoffs. Which again, it's manager's going to say, "Come on, lads, let's get yourself going." But yeah. realistically, it was it was always going to be hard. Um, Twenty minutes in, we're three 0 down. So oh. like, lads are sort of the thing is, we were sort, not on holiday mode. But last game of the season wasn't really going to happen. Charlton, yeah. I think it was Charlton we were competing with. They were two 0 up at half time. Had to be a massive swing. A massive swing and. All right, football nowadays, you've seen with Sheffield Wednesday the other day, it, it, it happens, do you know what I mean? But it's um, it was one of them, so half-time come in, found out what their result was. Managers obviously come in, understandably. Blah, blah, blah. But I was then going back and he's gone through everyone and he basically turned around to every one of the lads and said, if we continue playing how we're playing, you're coming in till the end of June. That's when your contract are two. We was obviously finished 8th of June, whatever it was. He was like, lone lads... I can get you back to the end of July, like your contract's still the end of July. And we're all looking at each other going, my car's packed. I've drove my car to Gillingham. My car's fully packed. I'm not turning back and going, going back to home, yeah. I'm going home, yeah. So we're all looking at each other. So we go back out and I think we ended up losing 6-1 or whatever. So we got battered even in the second half. Come in. And I, I think, I can't remember who the other lad was. It might have been Oscar Felko, do you know Oscar? Yeah. He might have been a bomber yeah, at yeah. the time. No, I, I played with him at Salford. Of course you did, yeah, yeah. Um, so we're walking in together and like, sort of looking at each other going, do you think he's like half serious there? Like, do you think we're actually going to be in now? Look, just lost 6-1 or 5-1, whatever it was. Got in, obviously, after the after the game and understandably he, he had a pop, but he didn't say anything to anybody. He was like, right, lads, speak to you tomorrow. So we're all looking going, like, what's, what's the crack here? But I've got in my car, I'm driving home. Like, I'm already halfway, I'm driving home. <laughs> got home, heard nothing, not even a text from the manager. Even though we'd just gone 15, 16 games on being done, bottom, unbelievable, yeah. like... Ledge season in the end, didn't hear a, didn't hear a word, no phone call, nothing. And I think I got a text like probably about a month later saying, um, it, to be fair, it was a nice text, but I was more disappointed with how I got nothing for for so long. And I was yeah. sort of like, does he like really hate me? Because <laughs> yeah, I, mean? yeah. I was actually hoping to go back. Like, I really enjoyed my time there. Um, and yeah, so obviously off the back of that, I was then supposed to go back to compete for the number one spot in Norwich. Um, Obviously, being a young kid, academy prospect, yeah. fans wanted it to happen. And then um, we went away to Germany for pre-season. And to be honest, I had a beast. Like, I had a beast in the pre-season games. Like, it just... I was a young kid at the time. And because i come off such a good spell in Plymouth, and again, it's from going from League One to the champ. And you know yourself, it's, it's a big step. It's a big step. And, and you're champ over-eager to impress. And you're over-eager to... And that's what it was like. I was the... Michael McGovern was there at the time. I was there... Angus had just gone back to City, I think, and it was like, right, perfect time for you to be the number one. So obviously coming in, training, and even then I just felt, Daniel Falk was a manager, I just felt at the time that there was something that weren't right and I just didn't feel comfortable in that that, that situation. So we went away to Germany, played a couple of pre-season games, um, again, had a beast, but made a mistake in both of the games, and then got back, all of a sudden the next day, Tim Krull walks in the door. But I'm looking going, well, 
I was never going to play anyway because that's not that, that, exactly that was not an overnight thing that was happening before yeah. we even went away. Um, so obviously Tim Cool comes in the building, big name. Of course he's going to come in and play. So obviously I'm sort of going right. Well, I could potentially sit there as a number two, not play. But comes to sort of start of the season, I don't even get the number two spot. Yeah. McGovern gets put as a number two. I'm number three. Gaffer calls me in and he's like. Look, I want you to go on loan. I want you to go keep playing games, keep progressing. And I was like, right, fine. Um, Stuart Webber called me and saying, we want to offer you a new deal. We want to do this, we want to do that. But that's when my agent then was like, look, let's try and get you out on a perm. So that's when Bolton then obviously come in. Uh, Lee Butler rung me. I think I think their gaffer Parkinson rung me at the time. But my agent at the time had Ben Alnwick there as well. So um, it was actually Richard Lee that first contacted me and said... I'd just left that summer. That's right, you'd just yep. gone. Yeah, that's it, yeah. So Richard Lee had actually contacted me and said, um, there's a bit of interest there. They're, they're, they're looking and potentially wanting to bring you in. I was like, perfect. So I rung my... I, I'm not obviously going to say who it was, but I rung my agent saying, there's a bit of interest at Bolton. And he was like, nah, there's no interest. But because Ben was obviously there, he didn't want to put us both yeah, in the same... Yeah, he was like, nah, nah, they're signing... Davies maybe at the time or whatever it was. Um, so obviously I'm a little bit like. So I've been told by Richard Lee, obviously a big agent, yep. great guy as well, that there's a chance of me going here. I'm now speaking to my actual agent and he's saying no. He's been in it off. So he's been in it off. He's literally <laughs> been it off. So I've got off the phone. And I'm thinking, so where, where am I going with this one? So I contacted Richard Lee again, I think. And then he must have got Lee Butler to ring me direct. And then obviously there was interest. So I then got off the phone. I rang the agent. I said, just been on the phone to Lee Butler and they're saying they want to take me. They want to take me on. Um, they want to take me on a permanent at that time. And, and then obviously, you know, agents are agents. Like, yeah, yeah. I've just been on the phone to him actually. Like, <sighs> they want to do it. Brilliant. Let's get it done. Yeah, good chat, mate. Yeah, good, nice. yeah cheers. Um, and then it it went on and on and on. They couldn't come to an agreement because then Norwich were being a bit of a, a pain by saying they wanted a fee for me and they wanted like half a million or whatever it was. No. 800 grand or whatever it was at the time. Um, Bolton weren't going to pay that. Like, they weren't going to pay, especially because I went in the, there to be the number two. So obviously and I'm going in. no money and weren't paying. Not, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so what, I was obviously looking to... What a time to, to sign for Bolton. That what one. worst time that. To be fair, like great, great club to go into. Um, but it went on for so long, they couldn't come to an agreement. And then it ended up going, right, you're going to go there on loan with an uh, obligation to sign in in January so I was like right okay let's let's get that done let's just get it done over the line <coughs> signed the contract went there first year or first six months I loved it championship like didn't play but was like getting into that sort yep. of first team environment championship um, and then obviously I think I got in the team the back end of it might have been December or whatever it was yeah, I played a few games team, yeah then, played yeah. Blackburn played a few games and done actually done done reasonably well like done, done quite well and then um I think Gaffer then pulled me back out because Ben then got fit and it's just how it works sometimes with Ben was the captain there as well and yeah. he was flying to be fair good like done really well that year and then um it then come to obviously January when I was supposed to sign a permanent administration then hit like chairman's <laughs> left administration hit they can't sign players. So I'm sort of like, I've got to go back to Norwich who don't basically, we've sort of like, not we, we didn't leave on bad terms, but the manager and... They're expecting you to go they're out. They're expecting me not to come back. Like there's no reason for me to go back. Me and the manager sort of had a little fallout. Um, he doesn't want me back, understandably, and it, it was what it was. So I didn't go back to Norwich. <coughs> Excuse me. I then went back to Norwich um, and I've been there 24 years. I had a good stint there. For, literally got back and they put me with the 21s put me in like some cabin far far away put me with the 21s and that's hard mentally it was me mentally it was hard because it was like i've been there that long i've done a good stint there like i've done everything that they've wanted me to yeah me and the manager didn't see eye to eye at the time and it was what it was that's football but for me to go back to my sort of parent club and get told look get yourself over there in a changing room on your own come in when the 21s are training it was it was tough, um, but I had no choice yeah. because they're your parent club. They they're my parent up. club. Yeah, Bolton so. couldn't sign me at the time. They they were still trying. Obviously, Phil Parkinson was like, "Look, just wait. We're going to do it. We're going to do it." Um, and then there was some agreement that they could. So I ended up signing. I went back there probably a couple of weeks later. Again, probably silly of me too, knowing that they were going in administration. Um, <coughs> I have to have a drink. <laughs> 
Let's talk about Bolton, mate. I know, yeah. <laughs> um, bring, bring them back nightmares, that. So, yeah, for, first year, but I went back. not getting paid, that's what that was. Not getting paid for six months, but that's what it was. So I went back in, obviously, Ben had sort of lost his head a little bit, got injured. I went in the team, done well, kept my place. Um, but because we weren't getting paid, everything was so up in the air. We had a lot of senior players, Wheats, Clayton Donaldson, McGuinness, um, Ben. We had a lot of senior players, Gary O'Neill, people like that, who weren't really... Andrew Taylor still there? Andrew Taylor, yeah. yeah. He was obviously probably one of the senior yeah. players. He was one of the one of the, the main people there. Um, and it got to that stage where they were like, well, if I'm not getting paid, I'm not playing. Yeah. Simple. Like they've made their money, they've had their career, they're sort of like, I'm it's not, not even that. It's the risk of injury. The risk See, of injury. Thinking, yeah. like, I've got one or two more years left <laughs> yeah. in the game, and they're going, yeah. Why am I putting 100%. my body on the line now? But no one understood that. No. Outside of the footballing world, no yeah. one understood that. So I think we refused to play. It was the Brentford game, I think. Um, Next minute, we're the worst people. Like, oh, you're getting paid all this. Well, hold on, we're not, we're not getting paid for yeah, starters. Yeah. So, like, the, the 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 shout is right. So, if you go work in Tesco and you're not getting paid, are you going to continue to work? You're not. Do you know what I mean? Oh, right, it's not. different. But it's, but it's not different, and in, in still the same sort of um, aspect. That, and, and and that's what it got to is like the senior lads were like, well, we're not playing. So then the younger lads are looking, going, well, we're going to have to do the same. We can't now go and play. So it got to the stage where we all obviously had to come to an agreement that, right, we're not going to play, didn't play. They then played the kids, I they think. They played the kids, yeah. Played the kids against, was it Brentford or Coventry or whoever, it, it was someone at the time. So they played the kids um, and then that had the uproar. That obviously sort of got, I think the PFA stepped in. Yeah. They paid us a month money. We played the next few games, but there were still a few lads that were going, some of them weren't even turning up. There was yeah. times at training where... We were supposed to be in for nine, and at quarter to nine, wheat saw someone would put in the chat going, "No training, training's off. We're not turning up. We got a game the next day or whatever." Yeah. And obviously, me being a youngster coming through, I was playing. I I needed to train, but obviously, yeah, yeah. I couldn't go against anyone else. And to be honest, uh, because we weren't getting paid, I sort of understood that. Well, hold on a minute. I don't want to go in and not not play. So, so that season went. We obviously didn't get paid for six months. <coughs> um, then. The summer come and the first year um palace would that was when palace first wanted me to go in they signed henderson in the end but um i had dougie on the phone going right we want to we want to take you as the third choice blah blah blind i just wanted to get out of there like, like don't get me wrong love the club loved yeah. that season because i played and played well but i needed because we weren't getting paid um you had to sort of try and do everything you could to get out so palace was like right perfect let's take you Spoke to administrators. Administrators were like, "No, we want two million for you." <laughs> and I was like, yeah. "No one's going to pay two million." Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's, Let's it, be realistic here. Like, I've got, got a no year money. left of my contract. You've got no bill. money. So basically, that that was the first knockoff. So there was a few lads that were sort of going right. I'm going to just take. I think they, a couple of the boys took it. Maybe McGuinness or someone took him to court or something. Yeah. And it was a big risk, but obviously in the end it worked out. And I was like, "Well, I love." Actually, I actually loved the club. Like, I really enjoyed being there. First year was was great. So I thought, right, I'm going to just suck it up here and, and hopefully next year I'll be the number one. I'll play, we'll get yeah. promoted again. <coughs> Obviously, next year comes, still no takeover. Lads still not being paid. Um, we can't sign any players. We had like six, seven senior players. And I can't remember if you remember, but we, we played the first five games with probably five, six senior players and we got beat five, six nil every yeah, game. I remember. Every single game Even we were getting season trip, you had to cancel games, didn't you? We had you? to cancel games. We weren't playing no pre-season games. We weren't really training. Yeah. Um, obviously, Parky was a manager at the time and it was it was brutal for everyone. Um, but again, I, um, I was quite fortunate because my contract didn't change from champ to league one because when I signed at Bolton, we were yeah. sick from the league flying at the time. So I don't think they saw, right, we're going to get relegated. Yeah, of course, yeah. So I was sort of like, right, well, it's not the worst case. I'll stay here. We're yeah. going to get paid eventually and new and takeover. Gonna games. I'm going to get games, appearance, money, perfect. Yeah. Right, let's stay. So I stayed for another six months. But obviously the first five games we were getting bad, 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 bad. bad. <coughs> <coughs> Throats in pieces here. <laughs> um, so the first five games we got bad and it was, as a keeper, you know, so it's demoralising. Yeah. But me being the senior one, I had to try and keep keep the lads going and get the young lads going and yep. 
because there were young lads in that team that yeah, would you, never have played anywhere else or probably haven't to this day because they were the only ones. That's all we had. Um, so then we we had the takeover and we ended up signing a few players. Parky had obviously left, moved on, and we then got Key Phil. He then come in. <laughs> di- uh, completely different to obviously Phil Parkinson. Like um, Signed a few big players, Daryl Murphy, Liam Bridcart, obviously Will Buckley was still there. Yeah. Um he no. still looked at like some some really good players <coughs> in that squad and that, but well, we obviously went, through adversity, few, it's, it's it so was, hard. It was so hard, mate, and and it got to the stage where we actually so we started on minus twelve points, but after them five six games, we were even worse off than what we were before we started the season. So we got our team going. Keyfield would come in, and we actually went. I think on a decent run, we actually picked up a few points. We then lost Bridge. Bridge got injured. Daryl Murphy trained when he wanted to train <laughs> and stuff like that, and it got to the stage where. We then went back to such a small squad and we were so restricted. Um, and then January come again and it was like, I had uh, another agent ringing me going, Huddersfield want to take you. They want to pay, they'll pay, they're willing to pay a bit of money, but only like 50 grand away. But because obviously the club had just been taken over, we looks like we're then getting relegated to League Two. I'm probably on okay money for that league, right? Let's. I was thinking, right, they might just play it cool here and get me off the ways, let yeah. move me on. Nothing. No, we don't want you to leave. Mike Pollock was goalkeeping coach at the time, and again, really good goalkeeping coach. Um, Keyfield was saying, no, we want you to stay. <coughs> so another move, which would have benefited me, yeah. didn't happen. So obviously all this is then sort of like, at the time you're like, right, whatever, like it's fine, let's just get on with it. But years down the line, it has that sort of like... You still look back you at still it look back like, at it and yeah, go, what, what if, what been? if? Yeah. I think Huddersfield had a, had a ledge season after that as well. Um so obviously then COVID hit. So obviously we're we're sort of relegated anyway. COVID hit. Lads are sort of going, well, I wonder if they're going to avoid the season so we can start the season again and yeah. blah, blah, blah. No one knew what was happening. So obviously COVID then hit, moved on from that. And that's when I joined Sunderland. Obviously joining Sunderland was a massive achievement for me because it's such a big club. It's such a huge club. And I, I, I was training with Ipswich at the time. Um, Jimmy Walker was goalkeeping coach and they... It's mad, really, because it's an hour from where I'm from. They offered me a contract. And then I had Phil Parkinson on the phone going... Oh, Remy... my son. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Um, <laughs> he was on the phone going, Remy, no, 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 look, we're going to offer you a better contract. Come sign here, you're going to play. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Sunderland, massive club. Obviously worked with Phil before. Um, it's a huge I was like, right, club as Brilliant, well. massive club. And it had so much potential. So I was like, perfect, brilliant. Got off the phone. Next day, salary cap comes in. Ipswich have obviously moved on. Someone else signed, I um, can't remember who it was, he's now, at, he, was at, he then went Preston, I can't remember what his name was. Um, so obviously Phil's then rung me going, Remy, like, I've got to apologise, salary cap's come in, hands are tied, can't do anything, can only offer you this. So I'm like, it's ringing Selzy at the time, my agent, and he's like, right, let me speak to, to um, Phil. And the only way of working around it was like, trying to offer a massive promotion bonus. Yeah. So the promotion bonus was ridiculous. Yeah. But you've got to rely on getting promoted. It's no, it's not an easy task. <coughs> it's not. It's, it's not an easy task. So, basically, cut a long story short, I ended up agreeing to sign on the salary cap. Um, so you're already chasing your tail from then. Do you know what I mean? So it went in first day. It was a Friday. I ended up going in. Trained Friday. There was a game, a friendly Saturday, and I weren't supposed to play in it. But for whatever reason, me being busy, I was like, oh, let me play the first half. So played the first half. Fine. Good game. Solid. Again, coming at half time, and I was like, "Can I play another 15, 20 minutes?" And Gaff was like, "If that's what you want to do, yeah. do it." Played another fifteen, twenty minutes, go and have go and throw one in. So I have, have a beast for the for the for the second half. So that then sort of had a spiral effect, and I just didn't really get off to to a start of Sunderland. Like people say, like I didn't really, yeah. I didn't enjoy it for starters. Um, it's a long way from home. It was a long well. way from home. COVID was still going on at the time. My family did come up. To be fair, my, my, my social life was okay because we were fortunate enough to meet some nice friends and people yeah. like that. But football-wise, it just didn't it didn't start well. And you know, like when someone doesn't start well, it's you, you, again you're chasing your tail. Um, and at such a big club, understandably, the fans are, are, are on you yeah, because yeah. we're in League One, should be in the Prem, massive club. Um, so yeah, in and out of the team sort of knew my my future wasn't going to be at, at Sunderland and I needed a fresh start. Um, so obviously salary cap had then 
and then I think they it was only a year or whatever it was because it was impossible yeah. to be able to continue of doing course, that. Yeah. So that then got binned off, and then before you talk about leaving, let's talk about Lee Butter for a minute. Lee Butter, what a guy, Lee Butter. <laughs> he's, so, he's probably chilling, putting some walls up right now oh, as he's mate. speaking. So Lee Butter was a, my goalie coach at Bolton. Yeah. Yours at Bolton yeah. for a bit, and yeah. then he went to Sunderland with yeah. Phil. Football golf every day. Oh my god! So it is. It's warm ups. You used to go out an hour early, <laughs> and you still Pure ready football for training. Golf. 15 holes and even when they come out come on let's have one more hole yeah. and then you'd like play foot golf for your warm up <laughs> and they'd be like fancy two touch and you'd be playing two oh, touch on and then you'd go and play small sides without even catching a ball the amount of times me and Ben Anik, the amount of times that we'd like either play head tennis or foot golf and it's like are you how good was Ben at head tennis by the way Mate, his the, hip flexion the was a best, joke the he best head tennis player I've ever seen net. unbelievable it was it was rubbish it all shouldn't have existed yeah. but, hey, <laughs> if you weren't on his team you were losing me yeah. and Butts used to play him and I think it was Jake Turn up at the time. Big large. Big large, yeah. Um, what a ledge. And if you weren't on Ben's team, there's no point playing. So we used to get to the stage, let's play two touch or yeah. let's say footy golf. Um, <coughs> but League Butler, what a guy. And his handshake as well. Mate, my hands are still sore from his. How big were his hands as well? See, look, I used to have this thing, I wouldn't shake his hand before a game. So even now when I see him, I shake his hand, but I do like an awkward one. A little. So, you know, like, <laughs> it'll go to like hurt you and like, I'll go too far past. But he and, like, does shake it now, like, because he's got that reputation, he plays on it as yeah, well. he does. Don't yeah. get me wrong, like he's got, a, like, I remember the first time I ever shook his hand and it was, it was more of an, you, you know, he's one of the nicest people you'll ever meet, it's but it was, great, it was like an intimidation handshake. And yeah. I was like, this is my goal kicking coach for the next season. Work, yeah. But then after that, like top got top guy, he was, uh, he was a, uh, he was a good, he was a good cocking coach as well. Brilliant um, goalie coach. I actually something. stayed with him for a few, few nights when I was at Sunderland. He was living in the barn in, uh, <laughs> and my 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 uh, rent was up, so I ended up staying with him for a few nights. And he's a good. Uh, him and Steve Park in both. Park, yeah, Park. Oof, <laughs> like that. <laughs> <coughs> they used to travel in together all the time. Yeah, mate, great guys. Is he at Wrexham Park? Yeah, yeah Park. Yeah, he's a top guy as well. Yeah. Oh, mate, I've got so much time for Lou Butler. Yeah, he's uh, he he was obviously just before I signed for Wrexham, he left. That's so right. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's I was it. Gutted. Yeah. I was on the phone to him constantly saying, "Come back, come back." But we've we're lucky enough now. We've got a good well, goalie he, coach he, now. He'd, he'd gone through sort of similar to what I'd gone through with Bolton. Yep. Obviously, Sunderland was a bit hit and miss. Yep. So I think he was as fed up as I was, and he yep. was sort of like I remember him saying after Sunderland, "I'm finished. Like I'm not going to do." It. And then obviously, Parky got the Wrexham gig, and it wasn't a bad one to to do. But you could see slowly he was pulling himself was away from it. for him. He was living over yeah. uh, Rotherham way. Yeah. He was, obviously, I think his knees started to seize up as well. Um, but I've always been fortunate to have unbelievable goalkeeping coaches. Yeah. Dave Watson, Tony Parks, Lee Butler, Paul Mavers, obviously you know Paul Mavers really well. <laughs> what a guy as well. Um, and Dino. Dino's just, uh, he's, he's, he's the best of the best. Let's mate. talk about how your Crystal Palace move materialised then. Dean Kiley. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, is he Uncle Dean or is he... Daddy Dean. Daddy no, Dean. No, Dean yeah. Dino's, Dino's, <laughs> yeah, Dino's top guy. So obviously I had him at Norwich. Yeah. Um, he moved on to Preston and we always stayed in touch. He'd be, <coughs> him, John Ruddy, um, Selzy were, were always the sort of three that I'd go to for advice, good, bad or whatever. Yeah. Um, but Dino obviously moved on. I moved on with whatever, stayed in touch. Um, then, like I said, the first year of Bolton, they tried to sign me there through Dean, obviously pushing for me to to go in off after a good season in champ. So that didn't materialise. And then, yeah, so Henderson was there for two years. He was then leaving. I was then leaving Sunderland. Dean was like, do you fancy it? And I was like, do I fancy it? Touch. It was, it, I say, do I fancy it? It was, to this day, it was the best decision I've ever made, but it was weighing it up. Right, I've, I've come off the back of Sunderland. I think I played 10 games, whatever it was. Didn't play as much as I wanted to. I'm going to go in and know that I'm not, I'm not, I knew what my gig was. I'm yeah, going to go course, as fair yeah. choice, knowing that I weren't going to play. Um, Everyone thinks it's an easy role, right? But you have to almost <coughs> accept that you've got to be the best trainer you can be Monday to Friday, and, and, and then Saturday's just a write-off you don't play. And, th and this is it. It's like I used to hate finishing drills when I was playing. I used to hate because they're not for, most of them are not for goalkeepers. Yeah. But I knew going in, and Butler, Butts used to make uh, a funny comment when I told him I was going. He was like, well, you're going to have to start diving now for the, <laughs> for the, um, for the finishing drills. So... Obviously, going into Palace, you're, you're playing with the best players. And like Wilfred Saha, for instance, like the competitiveness that we have for each other has literally brought us a friendship because yeah. we'd do a finishing drill and every time he scored, he'd celebrate. Every time I'd save one, I'd celebrate. And it was funny because we played Everton away and obviously I was fortunate enough to travel to all the games, do the warm-ups, um, 
on the bench in the Prem, stuff like that. So it was perfect. So we was Everton away and we was doing a finishing drill. <coughs> and it happened to be the last shot of the, until everyone went in and he, he's, he spanked it. And as he spanked it, it's like hit the crossbar. But as it's hit the crossbar, I've turned my head. So my head's gone in, hit the crossbar and it's smashed me on the, on the, in the face. <laughs> so I've obviously sort of like, I've, I've seen stars come round and I've seen Wilf sprinting off and probably the biggest celebration I've ever seen him do. He scored against some of the best teams in the world and that's the, the biggest celebration I've ever seen him do. So that was that, go, gone in, obviously went on the bench at the time, had a shower and in the shower I'm like, oh, I'm still feeling a bit like headed here. So I think that would, that would just go off. So I had the shower, walked out, sat on the bench and I'm sort of looking and, and I'm thinking, is this stadium like a little bit bright or am I just seeing double vision here? No so way. for the first half, no word of a lie. Bit of concussion there. I had a bit of concussion I, and I didn't even know what was going on. Obviously, I think we were, went two and up or whatever. And I'm trying to sort of like zone in thinking, Where, where's the ball here? Like no idea. And obviously speaking, we still laugh about it to this day. That's class. Because he that. always brings it up like, and obviously. You got knocked out by Wilf's Aha, Literally, mate. yeah. It's not a bad one, is it? <laughs> But um, yeah, that and and that's so it's, it's it's funny because people from the outside world are like, how are you friends with Wilf? Like, yeah. what a weird sort of friendship. Yeah. But he's such a good guy. Like, yeah. a, a lot of people know him from the person he is on the football pitch, arms in the air, moaning this. Skillful. But that's why he is where he is. Yeah, because he's so driven on the pitch. But you know what? Like off the pitch, through my career, he's one of the nicest people I've ever met. Like, does his charities, does his academies looks after his family, does everything that someone like me wants to look up to. Yeah. And and a lot of people only see him for, and this is the, the thing, never judge a book by its cover because a lot of people see him for, I suppose, the arrogant footballer he is, which yeah. he's not. He's just so driven and, yeah, what a guy, what a guy. Ledge, right. Before we talk about St. Johnson then, right, uh, let's talk about some goalie gloves. This is Matt Smith and this is the glove review on the Yours Mine Away podcast. Go on. Right. What gloves do you wear? What gloves do I wear? I forgot. <laughs> Mate, you know what? I've worn cells. I've worn <laughs> I've worn cells since 17, 18, and cells he's always looked after me. Yeah. Like big John Ruddy again, he was obviously in cells at the time. Um and he sort of got me in with with Adam. And yeah, ever since I've never ever worn anything different. Yeah. What and size are you? I vary depending on on what I wear. So between nine and a half and tens. Is that so? Is you mean you vary between the newer models or the cut of glove? That yeah. You like so so last year I was wearing more, or the year before I was wearing more total contacts. Yep. Which I was wearing nines, which are like a hybrid cut. <coughs> hybrid sorry, with like yeah. a roll finger. That's right. And yeah. a flat palm. A flat palm as well. Um, and then back end of or more back end of the season, I went to the F threes. Yep. So John, big John Ruddy was wearing them and said, look, give them a try. And I'm wearing more of a bigger, I was wearing a bigger size than them. So at the minute I'm wearing the F3s, but he's just brought a new cut out that I think Dean Henderson's been been wearing more towards the one glove as in like quite tight on your fingers. Quite tight fingers, yep. So I'm going to um, hopefully try and get a pair of them before America and give yep. them a go and see what they're like. But nice. Uh, do, you, do you have a preference then of a cut of glove? I can't wear... I say I can't wear roll fingers. I, I do, uh, if they're there, I'll wear them. But my, my perfect cut would be normally total contacts or I like a tighter sort of glove. You like, like a negative A cut negative, then, but yeah. more thinner. Yep. Do you know what I mean? So I can feel the ball more. I don't really like a thick pair of gloves. Yep. Uh, how do you look after your gloves? I, I've got really OCD with my gloves. Like in training or whatever. If this like, is the geeky I, stuff that I like, mate, mate. So I take a scoop. Yep. Like I'm trying to avoid... Getting, a little getting the, the little like oh, white yeah. bit on the grass because I hate it. Yeah. So if you see like sometimes in training, like I'm getting a bottle and I'm I'm again. John said it years and years ago. He's like, why are you cleaning the front of your gloves? The back of your gloves. What, yeah, the back <laughs> of your gloves when you when you're training because I just hate any. I'm same with boots. If I get any like little grass burn, like grass stain on them, like again, I obviously still wear them, but yeah. I'm scrubbing or getting my boot boy to scrub them as hard yeah. as I can. But I've always been funny with that like whenever he looks like right we're doing dippers now I'm like I've got brand new gloves on here yeah. <laughs> it is that feeling of like look the part play the part so like Actually, even yeah. I messaged the other day on Instagram about your new boots yeah, the new oh, boots. they're lovely yeah, they're though. lovely as well by the way I've ordered yeah. them yeah have you got them yeah, yeah I've ordered they're class they to be tomorrow. fair but they're like, like again fortunate I'm I'm lucky to get boots sent so when I'm wearing them like I like to feel not ten and a half are you <coughs> nine and a half but you might be squeezing anything aren't yeah. you? between nine anything and twelve <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah like I like to it's, it's weird because we've not had the Under Armour scent yet so I'm wearing at the minute our training kit's orange grey and then Under Armour 
black leggings and like a blue Under Armour. I don't look right. That it just looks so. I'm Baggy sort of that. wearing no Under Armour at the minute. So I hate wearing no Under Armour because obviously you know yourself like yeah. bitty elbows and that. So I'm trying to look as good as I can, but at the, <laughs> at the same time looking the worst I've ever looked. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I've got brand new Preds on, brand new gloves, but I've got a blue Under Armour with a, with black leggings. It just doesn't look right. But I've, I'm I'm a bit funny with like things like OCDs and yeah. stuff like that. Do you do you have many like superstitions then? Any quirks? Yeah, I do, I've, so I have superstitions, but sometimes if I go on like a a bad run of games, I'll try and change it. So my main superstition is like before every game on the six yard box, I have to face like I have to stand on the six yard box and sort of. Put my legs up four times. It's weird. Put my like put my legs up to my bum four times. I love all this stuff, so man. it's so mad. And then I got to one where my bottle of water I'd have to put to the right side of the goal. It'd have to be standing up. And if through the game I saw someone was drinking it and they threw it or whatever, can't pick it up. Fume. Well, I couldn't really pick it up, but I was fuming at the time. So if a got ball went out, like, I'd go and pick it up, put it back down. And but I'm not too. The older I've got, the less OCDs and less superstitions I've got. Like my my main one is. Obviously, the six yard box, that's probably my main one. But you know what? When keepers say they ain't got any, rubbish. Mate, every, uh, most keepers that I know have got some sort of superstition. So, me and Ben Foster were talking about this the other day, right? Every goalkeeper, we suffer from nerves. We all do, right? Absolutely, but yeah. Some people don't get actual nervous for playing football. Yeah. So, what we do is we like hide it with like OCD or yeah. quirks yeah. and that. We like say, oh, I do this before a game. Yeah. It's just a distraction yeah. technique that 100%. goalkeepers use. So, like, let's do that and then I won't be nervous. I won't be nervous. Ben Annick used to always sort of pull his sleeve up. Like, I used to see him do it all the time. Like, I asked him and he was just like... And touch the crossbar. I remember and touch, under, yeah, 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 always yeah. touch the crossbar. Like, yeah. Guaita, every time a ball hits the post or whatever, he'll just go and kiss the crossbar. Well, not kiss it, but like touch the crossbar. That's all and, I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, everyone's got their... Again, people probably don't have it as bad as certain. Yeah. Everyone's got their superstition. It, it does. It, you'd start losing that with the more games you play and yeah. the older you yeah, get. Yeah, I'm not as bad like, anymore. Can't be bothered with it. Literally at the stage now where it's like... If you, if I'm going through a season of playing, I'll and like I said, if I go through, if I do really well at the start and then we lose four on the bounce, I'll sort of come away from it a little bit. Or if we've conceded four or five goals, I'm not going back on my six yard no, box. Exactly, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I'm standing as far away from the fans as possible. Yeah. Um, but I've always had that. That's probably my main one. But it's, it, this is one of the biggest things that are, for young goalkeepers, right? We, everyone gets nervous, yeah. right? And like things happen in games, you just got to be able to put them to bed Literally. and just crack on yeah. with it. Like yeah. that's what makes goalkeepers. That's, but that's the, that's a massive thing. And people will go, "What's your biggest vo- a piece of advice?" And it's everyone's going to make like it's cliche, really. But everyone's going to make mistakes. We're all you, human, you, you, mate. We're all going to make that. If anything, we're going to make more mistakes than than most of the. Like, and again, we get highlighted more, understandably. But it's the ones like I've made mistake after mistake. And when I was at Sunderland, mate, I couldn't not make a mistake. It, yeah. just, it was just. I, w- I just went through that stage where I wasn't confident. I was going into games, and that was my biggest problem. I was going into games, worrying about making a mistake, and then I ended up talking to psychologists, stuff like that. And ever since, I've been the best I've ever been, like yeah. the, the, the most confidence I've ever had. And see, when you are having a bad time, <coughs> anyway, things don't come for, like go for you. No. You're just like flick one round the post, thinking I've done enough there, and it'll like it's, hit it's the post and go in. But then like, there'll be games when you're top of the league and. Even if you're not in, that yeah. interested, sometimes and you'd be like, "Oh, you just make a save, yeah. routine, and it." But, like, but you'll get lucky. You hit you in the face and yeah. then fall on the floor. And fall on the floor, and that's what Butt said when when I was at Sunderland. He used to turn around to me and go, "What have you done? Like, what? Why? Why is it always something? Like, I'd make a save or I'd drop one or whatever, and there'd always be someone that tap it in. Yeah. Someone else would do it, and it would get cleared. Yeah. And again, it's always like I said, you can always be the, the victim and feel sorry for yourself and stuff like that. But when it's not going your way. It's not going your way, but there's always, there's always, a, there's always a positive that's going to come out of it. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Of course. And, but see, when it's not going your way, right? You try and overemphasize, overemphasize good things, everything. So like you're trying yeah. to do the perfect save, you're trying to do Literally, the perfect yeah. pickup, you're trying to cross every yeah. cross. Where really you should just go keep it as simple as possible. Keep a quiet yeah. goal, yeah. yeah. And just go and that's simple. what I sort of tried to. Uh, I've got to that stage now. Obviously, last year, um, to be honest, you know what? Last year I didn't really make a goalkeeping error. All right, there was a couple of goals that went in, and you're like. Should have done, done better, better. Yeah, done, yeah, but that's one. that's always going to happen. But I don't Hindsight's think I ever, beautiful, yeah, isn't it? well, exactly. That's and, that, and that's it. Like, but it was more because I was going into games with a confidence of not even thinking about making a mistake. Yeah. Whereas when I was at Sunderland, all I had in my head was obviously coming off the back of Bolton, the rough time we had, and stuff like that. I was like, 
again with the fans and Sunderland fans, I was like, if I make a mistake, I'm going to get battered. And I was coming off of, like not even wanting to look at my phone half the time. And I remember saying in in another interview, like I got to the stage where I remember texting my old man, going like, I'm done with football, yeah, like I'm yeah. finished, like because it does take its toll, like and it, 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 it sometimes it does get tough. People think you live in your life, and don't get me wrong, like you, I'd never change it for for anything, and I'd never quit unless my body's falling to pieces. But at certain times, you do get to that stage. Um, in the end, yeah, obviously, fortunately, fortunate enough, I was lucky to join Palace, and it's been the best thing that I, I could have done. So sometimes, obviously, even like removing yourself from that limelight, then of like having a bad time yeah. and going, you know what, <coughs> I'm going to have to back a little sit bit back a bit yeah. here and work on myself. And like my you time, said, yeah. Even like working on yourself and yeah. seeing a psychologist, amazing yeah. to hear. Yeah. It would yeah. be amazing for like the, the listeners to hear yeah. as well that like that reflection period. Yeah. And now you've come through that, and you're yeah. like, I proper it, love footy again. You, you know can what? Tell, it was, like, it was when you were talking about Palace, yeah. Like even the expression on your face, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. like talking yeah, about man, Palace. I love it. I love it, man. And then like even like you, you was talking about Sunderland and Bolton a minute ago, like. You let like you go down. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. mad, but like that's what football does to yeah. you. It's a pure raw emotion yeah, that yeah. like, but it's bringing you out of yourself again, and like you you can tell that you're back enjoying yeah. it. Oh, I love it now. Like like I said, from speaking to a psychologist, everyone's like, oh, psychologist, this you don't need to speak to one. And and you know what? I spoke to one beforehand. Before I spoke to the the second one, I spoke to one for the first time, and I was like speaking to this this guy at the time, and I was like, I'm not getting anything out of this. I don't understand it. Like yeah. it's not doing anything for me. And then. Um, the CEO or whoever it was at Sunderland was like, look, I've got a psychologist, let's see how we get on. And it was the best the best decision I made because literally like you sit there and you speak about everything. It's not even football. You speak about everything that's going on in your life, everything that you've good things, growing bad up, things good things, bad you. things that you probably don't want to speak about to anyone else. Do you yeah. know what I mean? You want you, you, you keep it in. Um, and like I said, I went to Palace and it was like, right, I'm not going to play, but I'm going to do everything I can. Obviously, Knowing that I was going to work with Dino, like when I've worked with Dino previously, that's been the best football I've ever played when I was at Norwich, going yeah. on loan to Hamilton, Plymouth, places like that. So I thought, right, I'm going to work with Dino, I'm going to work with Jack Button and Finn uh, You're only going to get better. I'm improve. only going to get better. I'm training with Saha, uh, Benteke, Ebbs, Olise, people. Honestly, it's taken me up such a level because when you go, I say, when you play for League One, League Two, um, the standard's not as high, so you sort of sometimes get caught up dropping into that standard. Whereas here, I have to train to the best I can every, every single day. Because yeah. if I don't, I'm going to get Will turn around and go, come on, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or, or hammer me or Jordan, I, I, I like little things like that. And You get found out you quicker. You get found out quicker. And that's why I think the th- people think third choice is a great gig. Don't get me wrong, it's a brilliant gig. But it's not as easy as what people think. Because like you say, you're the one that's got to do the finishing drills every day. You're the one that, if you're not saving any shots, because you're always going to be in the limelight in training because yeah. you're the one that's always in goal, really. Like, Guaita doesn't really like doing finishing. Sam's obviously been playing, so he comes away from it. So it's only me. And obviously the couple of the young kids, when they do come up, so it's like, <coughs> it's one of them where it takes you, it, it's definitely took me to another level. And like I said, working with Dino, is, that was the biggest reason why I went. And the, the club itself's a ledge club. Like, And I do, I wake up every day and realise how lucky I am to be doing what I'm doing. I love it, to be fair. Yeah. Mate, it's class to hear, because obviously I always like look at the third choice one, and everyone has that same stigma. Yeah. Oh, it's best job in football mm. and that. But, like, you have to be on it every day. Every day, mate. Like, you, on a Saturday, if you're playing, you only have to be good on a Saturday. Yeah. You can train like yeah. a bag of like, yeah. exactly. crap but that's, all week but, but and that's then play it, on like, a Saturday. But and you're the opposite. You've got to impress Monday to Friday. Yeah. Because otherwise people will start going, tell you what, Training's yeah. not as good anymore. Yeah. Like he's, yeah. he's a bit off it, and like yeah. you can't get dropped from training. But. No, exactly. But that's why, again, I signed a two-year deal, and I ended up signing another year last season. But they didn't give me it because I'm a nice guy. They give me it because I'm. I, I feel I'm like I've done. Enough. I've done well enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I've done well enough to deserve a new deal. Do yeah. you know what I mean? So, um, but not only that, like even. With Vieira, he wanted three keepers. So I was travelling to every single game. And you know the graveyard shift, the, the shooting before the, shooting the game. Before a game's Even hard. that, you've got everyone watching in the stand. And if you're not you're not at it then, like people go, oh, obviously Saturday, Sunday, you just chill. But Saturday is probably the toughest one out of them all. Because you've got 20,000 people watching you. And you don't Doing save 50 anything. shots in four minutes. And the rest, do you know what I mean? From seven yards out. <laughs> Big Mateta trying to spank it as hard yeah. as he can. Um, but no, it's... It's a, it's a good gig, like obviously it's it's trying to weigh it up whether I want to play, whether I, of course I want to play, I want to play as much yeah. as I can. Um, and that's why I did, fortunately enough, go out on loan last year. 
<coughs> Excuse me. But finally, 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 we'll talk about your, your loan to St Johnson. Mm-hmm. Then obviously you got to work with Paul Mavers, a goalie coach I've worked with closely, yeah. and I loved it. I, Mavers changed the way that I played football. Anyway, like uh, yeah, you know what? Like he it, put a lot more emphasis into what you did on a Saturday mm-hmm. going forward. Yeah, and, like he would focus my week a lot more. Yeah, I've got a lot of respect for him. Callum Davison as well, who obviously took me in. And again, it was one where I went in from Sunderland, didn't play much. Palace didn't play at all. Yeah. It was a big risk to sign me because I hadn't played many games in in two years. So they took the risk, and it was the be- again. It was the best decision I made. I had a couple of potential League Ones, League Twos, but I thought you know what? I've been to Scotland before. I knew a few of the lads there. I've obviously heard Paul's a great goalkeeping coach. Um, and you know what? When I went in, I felt led. Like obviously, coming off the back of pre-season with Dino, yeah. got me in good stead to go to <coughs> to this club. And then luckily, <coughs> I was fortunate enough to have Paul. As my goalkeeping coach, and you know yourself, he's 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 a top coach, he's a lovely um, fellow as well. Unfortunately, he then decided to to leave me. <laughs> he so it in. yeah, I must he must have had enough of me. Yeah, he was <laughs> like, no, I can see this one going wrong, so I'm gonna I'm gonna jump ship. Um, so obviously, he left, which was it was disappointing. And it's hard when you when a goalkeeper when you when you got a great goalkeeping coach and he leaves halfway through a season when you know you're playing your best football when you feel good. Derails get, you a little derails bit. Derails you, yeah, because we were sort of like. Humming and Aaron, who's going to come in, and you're worried about who's coming in. And again, L Parish come in and, and done a good job, and I've got a lot of respect for him too. And for someone so inexperienced to come in and do the job that he done was 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 brilliant. He's obviously now left, and they've got Hinch, Hinchcliffe or something from yeah. Dundee United. Yeah. Um, so now nah, Paul was Paul was great, and somewhere down the line, I'd obviously look to potentially work with him again. Yeah. Oh, brilliant, mate. Now, uh, obviously, it's been lovely chatting to you and that. Nice. Uh, nice I always I always like to finish on this one now, right? Uh, what does the goalkeepers' union mean to you? Nice, oh. deep question. What, as in the keepers itself, what mate? Does it, I'm what? massive with... There's not one keeper that, through my career, that I've fallen out with. Do you know what I mean? Because I've always said it like, it, say you come, or we were at the same team, and and I was playing, then you come in, and you, I guess a bit like Fozzie, you come in... And you took my spot. Like it's not your fault. You know what I mean, it's not I've personal. got a problem with the manager. It's yeah. not your fault. So I'll support you as much as you supported me the last two, three years. You, do you know what I mean? And that's that's a massive. Like even at St Johnson last year, we had a lot of. We obviously had El Parish and then a few young lads, and it was such a tight knitted group because we all supported each other, yep. good and bad. Yep. When obviously things weren't going well, we were all. The goalkeepers are sort of. <coughs> it's a different breed, isn't it? We are a different breed, and we're mate. always on our own, and we do our own thing. And lads are always probably looking, going, "Oh, look at them having a jolly up and stuff like that." And but if you put, a, I can do better outfield than what you can do in goal. Do you know what I mean? That's what I say to everyone. Like if you put me outfield, I could probably do an okay job. If I put you in goal, you've got no chance. But they all think, "Yeah, I'll go in goal. It's easy. It's this. It's that." But I'm massive with with the, with the union. Like I'll. I'll always support a keeper, even though he's took my spot. Yeah. Because, like I said, we're all in it. You're working that close together, mate. And you work that close together, so close. And that's massive, having that connection. And there's nothing worse than going into a, G- a goalkeeping session and there's that tension and there's no banter and no one's... Like, I try and, even with Palace, like, I, I just try and enjoy it every day. Like, Dino's great, obviously. B and um, Sam are good. And the young kids are great as well. Jack was good last year, so... I like to go into an environment and enjoy what I'm doing, and luckily at the minute that is what I've what I've got. Ah, oh, class, mate. Uh, it's been lovely to hear about yeah, like nice. the highs and lows and like throw us in bits. Yeah, yeah. mate. <laughs> You've choked your whole way through this. <laughs> <laughs> Start to call you B. Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> Words won't come out. I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> right, what an episode it's been, anyway, mate. Honestly, nice it's, it's really good to hear like obviously the highs and lows and how yeah. like through adversity you've come through it and yeah. stuff like that, mate. Yeah. Them sort of stories of what I live for because yeah, like. Especially in goalkeeping, we have so many lows, mate. And then, like, to hear when you come through the other side yeah. and things that helped, I That's think it. it's really inspiring for there's a lot always, of people. There's to always an end to the tunnel, mate. They yeah. always come out the other side. Exactly. So, everyone, Remy Matthews, thanks a lot, nice mate. One. Cheers, mate. Uh, good luck for the rest of the season, anyway. Uh, this has been the Yours Mind Away podcast with me, Mark Howard. Please make sure you give us a, a like and a subscribe. It really helps us grow. Uh, and check out his score on uh, YouTube. Yes, go on it. Bosh. 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 <laughs> What a save from Mark Howard.